Welcome to a new episode. In this video we'll talk about Loki, a Norse god that I'm sure many of you are familiar with. He is a popular god that is often seen as the anti-hero, one that loves tricks and making trouble. In this video you will learn about the real Loki and also what kind of tricks he had up his sleeve. The story of Loki's birth is not well known. His father, Farabeti, was a powerful giant and his mother, Levi, probably resembled a forest or a tree. It is believed Farabeti, like a ball of lightning, struck Levi, giving rise to Loki. That makes that Loki is a giant by birth, which is important because giants often oppose the gods, but Loki is different. Even though he is a giant, Loki lives with the Norse gods in Asgard. How did this happen? The stories do not give a clear answer. Some say he made friends with Odin, the king of the gods, and Thor, the god of thunder. Others say he and Odin are blood brothers. Loki had two brothers named Helplenty and another named Vyleister. Unfortunately, not much is known about him. He is married to the goddess named Sigyn, a goddess known for her loyalty and devotion. Loki and Sigyn had two children, Navi or Neri and Feli. There is a tragic story behind him. This will be told later in the video. Loki also had three children with the giantess Ingerboda. They are Fenrir, a giant wolf known for his immense strength and size. Fenrir plays a significant role in Norse mythology, particularly in the events of Ragnarok, where he is prophesied to have a major impact. Jormungandr, also known as the Midgard Serpent. Jormungandr is a massive snake that encircles the earth. He is a central figure in many Norse myths and is destined to find Thor during Ragnarok. Hel, a unique being who presides over the underworld known as Helheim. Hel is often depicted as being half alive and half dead, symbolizing her rule over both the living and the diseased. In future videos we will cover all three of them. Loki's actions and tricks often lead to big changes and important events. His behavior can be funny, but sometimes it is also dangerous and causes trouble for gods and people. He shows that even gods can be playful and not always perfect. Let's take a look at some of Loki's tricks. The birth of Sleipnir. Asgard was in urgent need of protection. The gods needed a wall and a giant builder offered to construct it. He asked for the sun, the moon and Freya's hand in marriage as payment to be completed by the end of the winter. The gods agreed, thinking the task was impossible in such a short time. However, the builder, with the help of his mighty horse Svadivari, made rapid progress. Fearing that they would lose, the gods turned to Loki. In response, Loki transformed into a beautiful mare, luring Svadivari away and disrupting the builder's work. The mischievous intervention led to the wall's incompletion and the gods avoided a hefty payment. But there was an unexpected result. Loki, as a mare, became pregnant and later gave birth to Sleipnir, the eight-legged horse who became the steed of Odin. Loki's wager with the dwarves. Loki's misbehavior knew no bounds and it led him to a wager with Broker, a skilled dwarf craftsman. The bet was simple yet risky. Loki bet his head that Broker and his brother Sindri couldn't create three objects superior to those the sons of Ivalia had made for the gods. Sindri set to work creating three magical items, Gungnir, a spear of Odin, Draupnir, a golden ring and most famously Mjolnir, Thor's hammer. Loki, in an attempt to sabotage the dwarves, transformed into a fly and bit Sindri to distract him. Despite these tricks, Sindri succeeded in his tasks, creating the object of immense power and wonder. Loki, in a typical trickster fashion, wriggled out of the bed by arguing that Broker would have to damage his neck to take his head, something not agreed upon. The theft of Thor's hammer. Thor's mighty hammer Mjolnir was stolen by the giant Thrym. Thrym demanded Freya in marriage as ransom for the hammer. The gods, desperate to retrieve Mjolnir, turned to Loki for a solution. Loki's plan was bold and humorous. He convinced Thor to disguise himself as Freya and attend to the wedding of Thrym. The gods dressed Thor in a bridal gown and adorned him with jewels and Loki, disguised as a bridemaid, accompanied him. At the feast of Jotunheim, the giants were fooled despite Thor's less than ladylike behavior. 
When the hammer was brought forth as part of the marriage ceremony, Thor seized it, revealing his true identity and proceeded to defeat Thrym and his giant kin. Loki's tales also included a long-standing feud with Heimwell, the Watchman of the Gods. His rivalry is less detailed but equally significant, highlighting the contrasting nature of the two deities. Heimdall, vigilant and noble, stood as stark as opposite of the deceptive and chaotic Loki. Their differences went beyond just their personalities. Heimdall was seen as a symbol of order and stability, while Loki represented change and chaos. This made them natural opponents in the world of the gods. Over time, their rivalry grew, fueled by various incidents and clashes. Each encounter between them was a clash of their opposite nature. The tension between Loki and Heimdall built up to a prophecy about Ragnarok, the end of the world. In this prophecy, Eidos foretold that Loki and Heimdall would face each other in the final battle. This battle would end with them taking each other's lives. This was seen as the ultimate fate for both of them, showing that the differences could never be resolved. This part of the story, where Loki and Heimdall are destined to fight to the death, shows how important they both were in Norse mythology. It was not just about their feud, but about how they represented different parts of the world and its fate. One of Loki's most famous tricks involved Sif, the wife of Thor, the god of thunder. Sif was known for her beautiful long golden hair. One day, Loki decided to cut off Sif's hair while she was sleeping. When Thor discovered this, he was furious and threatened Loki with violence. Loki, knowing he had gone too far, promised to fix his mistake. He went to the dwarves who were skilled craftsmen and asked to make new hair for Sif. The dwarves crafted hair made of fine gold that would grow like natural hair. When Sif wore this new hair, it shone even more beautiful than before. The cause of Baldur's death Baldur, a god of light and purity, was loved by all. He began having dreams of his death, which alarmed the gods. His mother, Frigg, made everything in the world vow not to harm Baldur. Thus, the gods amused themselves by throwing things at Baldur, which all harmlessly bounced off. Loki, however, found out that Frigg had overlooked the mistletoe. He crafted a dart from mistletoe and guided the hand of Hoder, Baldur's blind brother, to show it during their games. The dart struck Baldur, killing him instantly. This caused immense grief among the gods and was one of Loki's most grievous acts. And here is where the sons of Loki and Sigyn comes to play. After the death of Baldur, the gods sought revenge on Loki. He was captured and taken to a cave. There the gods tied him with the entrails of his son Narvi, who was turned into a wolf and killed by his brother Vali. Above Loki, a snake was positioned so that his venom would drip onto his face. His five Sigyn stayed by his side, catching the venom in a bow. But whenever she had to empty the bowl, the venom would drip on Loki, causing him excruciating pain. This punishment was meant to last until Ragnarok. It reflects the severe consequences of Loki's actions and the god's retribution for his more serious offenses. Looking back at these stories, you see that Loki's character represents the unpredictable. He is not pure evil, but he's not good either. He brings both help and harm to the gods. In Norse belief, this balance was important. Life is not just good or bad, and Loki shows this idea well. Unlike the Norse gods, there are no known temples or priests dedicated to Loki. This might mean because he is a trickster and not a traditional god of power, war or fertility, which were common reasons for worship in ancient times. He instead was probably part of rituals and storytelling. His tales would be told to teach lessons or for entertainment. These stories would remind people that even gods can make mistakes or face problems. They show that being clever can be helpful, can also cause trouble. He influenced Norse culture by representing the idea that not everything is under control. His actions in myths shows that even the gods can be surprised. This was a way for people in the past to understand the unpredictable parts of life and nature. Loki teaches us about the consequences and responsibilities. His tricks often led to problems that he or the gods must fix. This teaches that actions have effect and one must be ready to face the results of their choices. Loki represents complexity, change and the unexpected in life. He shows that not everything is black and white. Norse mythology was an integral part of daily life of the Asian Scandinavian society. 
influencing the world view, cultures and traditions. The myths were not just stories, but reflections of the values, fears and beliefs of the Norse people. The story of Loki served multiple purposes. They were a means of preserving history, displaying natural phenomena and conveying the moral lesson. These stories were passed down orally, often in the form of poetry and were central to communal gatherings and celebrations. Loki's tales with their themes of cunning and transformation also mirror the Norse people's adaptation to the harsh and variable environment. Understanding the culture and the historical context of Loki's myths provided deeper appreciation of their significance. It shed light on how these ancient stories continue to resonate in modern times, reflecting universal human themes of chaos, adaptability and grey areas of morality. This was the story about Loki. More videos about Norse mythology will follow. Let us know in the comments what your favorite trick of Loki was or what kind of god you want to see next. Thank you for watching and until next time.